Welcome to this week's edition of Rick Answers His Email. First up is from Jim, who wants to know how to delete some things out of Microsoft Word. First off, Jim, remember that none of your documents exist in Microsoft Word. You only use Microsoft Word to create your documents. Your documents are actually stored in a folder, usually, if you didn't change it, in a folder called Documents, since you're using Windows Vista. So open up Windows Explorer, or just My Computer, click on your username, Scroll over here on the right and you'll find a folder named Documents. And in here, you will find all of your documents. And all you need to do to delete them is just hold down a control key on your keyboard to select more than one, if you want to do that, and then push Delete on your keyboard. It'll ask you, are you sure you want to remove those to the recycle bin? And you'll just click Yes, and they'll be gone. Joe Adam has not done a review on Carbonite. I've seen it in action a few more times, and I still think Carbonite is slower than Mozy, M-O-Z-Y. So I still like Mozy the best for online backup. And as far as what is the best thing to do in terms of external backup and that kind of thing, your, your last question was the best one, and that is, yes, redundancy is the best approach. The more copies you have of something on, the more, on different types of media, the better you're going to be backed up and the happier your data will be. Dano has some problems with Windows XP and blue screens, but you didn't give me any other data, any other information. And I can tell you that it can be a myriad of things. It can be hardware driver problems. It can be software problems like spyware. It can be just programs that are not working well with each other and they're conflicting, causing blue screens. There could be a gazillion things to do. Dano, there is an article on the Microsoft website at this address that will have a one-hour and 30 minute, I think it's one hour and 39 minute screencast, an actual video showing how to troubleshoot blue screens of death. And so you can see it's a very complex thing, but if you want to go and check out this article, that will give you some more information about your blue screen. Roger, unfortunately, I don't keep up with the Windows Mobile handsets because they do change quite often. And I'm not a huge Windows Mobile fan since for, the, for most users, unless you're in a corporation like yours that has specific type of applications for it, it is not the best cell phone operating system. I do know that there is a, an iTouch or a HTouch or MyTouch. There is a new kind of an iPhone type copycat using Windows Mobile as the operating system. But I can't remember which carrier is carrying that or which phone that is. But I think your best thing is going to do is talk to folks in your company and then maybe whoever provides your cell phone service to get some information from them. Richard, without seeing your computer, I think there's two things that might be happening. One, it might be you're holding the power button too long. And by holding it too long, it's not giving it a chance to trip on and, and get going. Because some people, when they have trouble turning it on, they'll push it and hold it thinking they've got to hold it a little bit longer. Push it and let go and make sure that it has time to come on. That'd be the first thing to try. If that doesn't work, the other option may be that the power switch itself is getting worn out. The second option might be is that the power button itself might be getting worn out. And if that's the case, you're going to have to take it into a hardware shop, have them look at that possibility for you. Delbert, thanks for searching the site first. I have a tip on this for Windows XP, but I never have put it up for Windows Vista. So for you to get your password off so you don't have to stop and wait to put that on, number one, you can only have one user. If there's more than one user, then you're always going to have to stop at that login screen. But if you only have one user on your computer, you want to head to your control panel in Windows Vista, go here where it says User Accounts and Family Safety, and click where it says Add or Remove User Accounts. The next screen you'll see is the list of your accounts. Click on your account. I don't have a password on my computer, but if I did, there would be an option over here that says delete password. And when you click delete the password, it'll ask you to confirm it, probably even make you put your password in one last time. Then the next time you reboot your computer, there'll be no more password. It'll go straight to your desktop. Hello, Neil. I'm glad you got rid of that Police Pro spyware using malware bytes. I think what you're experiencing with the startup error is not that the virus is still there, the spyware is still there, but there's a reference to it in what's called msconfig. If you just go to start and then run and type in msconfig, m-s-c-o-n-f-i-g, you will get a window that looks something like this. 
click over to the Startup tab, scroll down and find the entry that was listed in your email to me, uncheck it, and the next time you reboot your computer, that error won't be there. And for anyone that has spyware infections, Malwarebytes works real well, but I also recommend downloading and running, updating and running SpyBot Search and Destroy. Best place to find it is download.com or my website, helpmerick.com, and run a thorough scan with it. And I would run daily scans with both of them for about two to three days, maybe even a week, to make sure that garbage is gone and stays gone. Hello, Mike. If you've not read my article on my website, helpmerick.com, on the wallpaper registry change, read that first. If that did not work, then you still have a spyware infection of some type run the different tools that I have listed in my security section. Under the security section on my website, I have links to the various anti-spyware and antivirus products that I recommend, and it'll get you directly to the product. If you try searching for those on Google, you're going to end up in a bad place, more than likely, especially if you're already infected. Tally, your particular problem is usually related to some type of a spyware or virus infection that prevents you from running any executable files on your system. I would try a couple of things. Number one is I just showed you the security section on my website. I would try the Combo Fix program. Combo Fix works really well for reestablishing the proper associations that the registry should have, getting rid of any of those blocks that these other spyware programs are putting on our systems that prevent you from doing things. And if none of that works, you could always try a system restore since you're using Windows Vista go back to maybe a month or even six weeks ahead when you had the problem and reset all of those settings if it allows you to so that you can get back up and running right away. And last up today is from B. Hushan who's asking about making photo slideshows. Go to my website helpmerick.com search for the word slideshow and you will get a couple of different articles. One that I want you to look at is using Picasa, which is from Google, and we have a video tip here on how to make slideshows using Picasa. It's very simple. You don't have a ton of options as far as transitions and things like that, but it is quick and easy, and it'll work for your DVD players. Another one to look at in the results is a program called ZatShow, and the ZatShow, we have a link to it right there in the article, has a free version and a pay version and it is a very flexible easy to use program that gives you a lot of options as well so there you have two articles right on my website that will give you free access to making slideshows for your photos uh, thanks for writing thanks everyone for writing I'll see you again next week with Rick answers his email